All right, today's lesson, we are going to define specific heat capacity and thermal capacity. Both very similar, but not the same. So be careful. Um, neither is particularly difficult, but uh, just be careful. Thermal capacity and specific heat capacity. And we'll take a look at some problems. So the first thing to imagine is imagine adding the same amount of heat to one kilogram of copper. And at the same time, you, you add that same amount of heat to one kilogram of brass, two different materials. You make it a fair test. You put the same amount of heat in for the same amount of time, et cetera, et cetera. It's a fair test. Would they both rise in temperature by the same amount? Would they both go up 10 degrees? Would they both go up 20 degrees or would one rise in temperature more than the other? They would in fact have different temperature rises, which is not the most obvious thing in the world. Um, but when you think about a few real world examples, uh, it does make sense. Um, so when a substance is heated, it's internal energy increases. You're putting energy into that substance. So you're increasing the potential and kinetic energy. And remember, internal energy is both potential and kinetic energy. So we're increasing those values. I can put little arrows on that. We're increasing the potential and kinetic energy. The stronger the force between the particles in a substance, that's pretty important, the more heat energy turns into potential energy. Let's think about that the force between the particles is not the same in each substance. For example, copper and brass are going to have different forces between the particles of that substance. Otherwise, everything would behave the exact same way, whether it was wood, metal, copper, plastic, etc. So when we have more energy turning into potential energy, that results in less kinetic energy, right? Think about that. If more energy is being converted into potential energy, that means we have less converted into kinetic energy. So what is temperature measuring exactly? Temperature only measures kinetic energy on the average kinetic energy. So in a substance where a lot of the, the energy input turns into potential energy, the kinetic energy doesn't increase as much. Therefore, the temperature rises less. So our definition for specific heat capacity is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one unit mass of a substance by one degree Celsius, or important to note, or by one degree Kelvin. We know that those are the same increment. One Kelvin is the same magnitude. If we're going to increase the temperature by one Kelvin, that is no different than raising by one degree Celsius. Notice also over here, we've got unit mass. That is simply because the units for specific heat capacity can be grams or kilograms. There is no restriction there. Similar to other things that can be given in different units, right? I could give you a speed in kilometers per hour, or I could give you to, I could give it to you in meters per hour, although that is less common. Uh, both are valid. This is the simple equation, um, and we'll look at it one other rearranged way because that is the most common way. However, I prefer to, whoops, I prefer to start with this because it is nice and clear. The specific heat capacity is the amount of energy or heat, you could say thermal energy, the amount of energy required to raise some unit mass, so we could say grams or kilograms, by some number of degrees. So we're trying to you know, change the temperature of something or something will change temperature. So that is it. When we use an example number, it actually makes a lot of sense. So let's look at water, for example. Water is said, the data or the uh, theoretical value for the specific heat capacity of water is 4,180 joules per 
kilogram per degree Celsius, or I could change that Celsius to Kelvin. So what does this number really mean? Let's look at our definition for specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity, it's the amount of energy, that would be this number, 4180, it's the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of a unit mass, in this case one kg, by one degree. So that is exactly how much energy is required to raise a kilogram of water up one degree. This is the more common way to see this formula. This is just a, a nice way of displaying it. Um, it's got no fractions. Um, and the other way to think about it is if something has a specific heat capacity and you have a certain mass and it rises or falls by some known temperature, we can calculate the heat absorbed or released. Heat absorbed would mean positive number. If it was released, be careful. You can have a negative Q value. That would mean something is cooling down, i.e. it is releasing heat, not absorbing heat. So this is the same uh, equation as we've seen uh, on the last slide. These are the same. We just rearrange it. Let's look at an example. Um, this question is asking for how much heat was used or how much heat was put into it. So this is the written out form of the equation. I'm going to put it back into the Q equals MC delta T. What is that? How much heat was used? So I'm actually looking for Q. I have the mass of the substance. We know that 500 grams of olive oil is heated until its temperature rises by 120 Kelvin. That is the same as rising by 120 degrees Celsius. It's not the same. 120 degrees Celsius is not the same as 120 Kelvin. However, increasing the temperature by 120 Celsius is the same as raising the temperature by 120 Kelvin. If you don't understand that difference, you should check out my other video where I talk about Kelvin and Celsius. Remember that converting from Celsius to Kelvin, you just add 273 onto your temperature in Celsius, which will give you your Kelvin number, and it's generally a much bigger number. Um, the specific heat capacity is also given to us here in this problem, 1970. Uh, joules, that's supposed to be multiplication, I apologize joules per kilogram per Celsius. So that is um, also a known value. So let's go ahead and calculate Q. The heat absorbed by the 500 grams. Now, careful, this is given to me in kilograms, but this is given to me in grams. The key really is, above all, make sure they match. If you wanna convert everything to grams, fine. Most, pe most people, excuse me, prefer to convert to kilograms. So I'm going to change that to kilograms. So my mass of 0 0.5 kg times my specific heat capacity. Times my temperature change. And there you go. Not um, not overly complicated. I'm just going to multiply these three numbers and we'll see what we get. When I multiply these numbers, what do I get here? And you'll also notice that the units will cancel off. So I am getting 118200. What about units? What is that value going to be given in? Well, energy is usually measured in joules. But is it going to be joules or kilojoules? Kilograms cancel off, numerator, denominator. It's just like saying 5 divided by 5 is 1. Times 1 will not change the answer. So kilograms divided by kilograms we can eliminate. I also have Celsius and Celsius. I'm actually only left with joules. So if you keep track of your units, you will also uh, have the advantage of knowing that you, um, you, know, you're, you won't ask yourself, oh, what units, what's, is that joules, is that kilojoules? Um, 
worth mentioning that is a large answer so a lot of people would maybe consider uh, switching that to kilojoules um, which would be 118.2 kilojoules thermal capacity careful different from specific heat capacity uh, thermal capacity the relationship between the amount of energy an object requires to raise its temperature by a given amount is called its thermal capacity it is measured in joules per degree Celsius or joules per Kelvin. Now, why is this similar? Why is it different? It's different in the sense that the larger the object, the harder it will be to raise the temperature by one degree or one Kelvin. Um, <clears throat> in the sense that if you have a small cup of water or a big bucket of water, it's going to take a lot more energy to raise the temperature in the big bucket of water. Let's take a look here. We've got thermal capacity, the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of a substance by one Kelvin or one degree. <clears throat> so you'll see some similarities here. Yes, it is very, very, very similar, right? We've literally just dropped out the M, which means now that we're not really factoring in the mass as, as part of the sort of a, you know, earlier the first 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 time we looked at the specific heat capacity equation we saw that c uh, was equal to q divided by m times delta t we had this equation where mass was kind of in the denominator right meaning the bigger the mass of course it's going to take more energy so dividing by mass kind of made it a fair test almost like saying per kilogram how much energy is required per kilogram. Now I actually am just straight up saying how much energy will be required to raise it per degree or how much energy will be required to go up one Celsius. Okay, so let's do an example of each. Um, let's calculate the specific heat capacity of iron in this case, right? This is not actual values. I made these up. So don't worry about the accuracy of the answer. Um, let's calculate the specific heat capacity and also the thermal capacity of the sample. So remember, specific heat capacity, I am using this equation. Or if you're already in this form of the equation, this is actually the form where you will be directly able to solve. Okay, so the sample requires... 7700 joules per 45 grams per 2 degrees Kelvin. That is like saying it took 7700 joules to raise 45 grams of iron by 2 degrees Celsius or to raise it by 2 Kelvin. When I punch this into my calculator, what will I get? You guys can try it yourself. 7700 divided by, that will be 90 in the denominator. Okay, so I get 85, uh, roughly, that is rounded, joules per kilogram, whoops, joules per kilogram Kelvin. That is my answer for the specific heat capacity notice that is a test or a value that is talking about the energy required to raise one kilogram one kelvin now because i've divided by 45 and i've divided by two so now it's per kilogram per kelvin rather than the amount of energy that was required per 45 kilograms per two degrees kelvin now let's look at the thermal capacity where we said Q equals C delta T. Um, let's look at the thermal capacity. The thermal capacity is truly, um, now be careful, we're using the same variable for the thermal capacity, so be careful. We're trying to see how much energy is required to raise this sample one degree, regardless of its size. We're just talking about, we're referring to this sample alone. It's not really a theoretical value about iron because um, this is a specific size of a sample. 
not just one standard size like in specific heat capacity. So uh, let's rearrange this. I will uh, divide each side by temperature change. So I'm left with C equals Q divided by delta T. This is what I'm left with. When I go ahead and calculate that, this sample seems to require 7700 joules for every 2 Kelvin. That's how much it takes for every 2 Kelvin. It takes 7700 joules just to raise it to Kelvin. So I'm basically asking, well, how much energy is required per Kelvin or per degree? So that you can go ahead and punch in your calculator and you'll see that you get a pretty straightforward answer and you get an answer that actually makes perfect sense. You see that the thermal capacity is 3850 joules. That is how much energy it takes per Kelvin or per degree. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped. Uh, feel free to leave a comment.